Hello, class. What I wanted to do today was to talk about line charges, power lines and lines of charge, and I'm going to do a derivation very similar to one in your textbook. I think I didn't really look over it that closely because I like to do mine, because uh, I, uh, I, I think I can explain it very well. I have. A fresh cup of tea, which I put, I went to the trouble of putting in a styrofoam container. Unfortunately, the lid will not stay back. There we go. Ah. So, I'm all set to go uh, for this lecture. And uh, I like this lecture, too. Uh, that's, that's another thing. I like the derivation. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> where, where is it? Ah, boy, for the first time in a long time, uh, I have thought of actually putting the timer on. There we go. All right. Now, uh, so what we're looking at today is line charges, right? and uh, or a line of charge and there's a lot of things that can make you know what is charge if you think about it uh, a coulomb equals an amp second right so if i have an amp running through a wire for one second that transfers one coulomb of charge or you could say an amp is a coulomb per second that's a flow rate so that's a charge flow rate is really what you're looking at with an amp. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, that's sort of what we're, we're going to be looking at uh, today, lines of charge. And of course, what are the electric fields around a line of charge? And so let's get started. Uh, I want to look at a long line of charge. Now, the way that you should envision this long line of charge, and this is gonna go from minus A to plus A. All right, it's a huge long line of charge, and uh, we're looking at it from the top. So in other words, it's like a bird's eye view. A bird is flying above the transmission line and we're looking down on the transmission line. That's what we're looking at right now. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Newton's uh, you know, uh, calculus and we're gonna cut out a piece. Now, I'm just gonna come up with some, some arbitrary uh, you know, radial uh, off this, right? Here's an arbitrary radial off this long transmission line. I'm just gonna draw that out perpendicular to the transmission line because that's what a radial line is, right? Perpendicular to the cylindrical transmission line. All right, so that's going out in that direction, okay? Now, let's look. Uh, th there's a couple things here that I want to uh, uh, the distance uh, uh, here is going to be Z, right? So this is the distance Z off here. And this little incrementally small part here is DZ. Boy, I probably couldn't have written that in the worst place. Should have written a little higher, a little lower. I had to go exact. But anyway, that differentially small little piece of transmission line is is dz. Now the distance away from that is z. Right? That little extra amount dz that I've got there is the little uh, or actually this is going right to the center of the charge in dz, but we're 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 just cutting out a little section of charge and we're saying, well that's like a point charge. Right? So that's like a point charge. That's what we're thinking. This, this is just a radial out from the uh, thing. And we just want to look. You know, we've got to pick a, pick a point in space, and we're just going to see what the electric field of that point charge, that little d sub z point charge here, let's make that red. I'm going to say that what is the effect 
of forget all of the rest of the transmission line. For, forget that. Forget it even exists. We're just looking at this little section of DZ. And what we want to do is we want to figure out, we're going to integrate over the whole transmission line in a little while anyway. But we're going to, as because the, the, you understand. All right. Now, what we want to see is how that affects some point out here. Now, it, does it matter where the point is out here? No, not really. So I'm just going to pick any point. I'll, uh, I'll pick this point right here. Okay. Should use the blue. <laughs> no, I, uh, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to pick this point out here. And I'm going to say, well, how does this charge, forget the rest of the transmission line, how does just this little amount of charge on the transmission line, which I can approximate as a point charge, how is that going to affect this point in space out here? What kind of electric field will that little point charge create at this point out here in space. You see, you see what I'm saying? Okay, now, well, obviously, is, is it going to be pointing toward it or is it gonna be pointing uh, away from it since, since this is a positive point charge, right? It's a positive point charge. I'm saying that this line here is positively charged, positive, uh, you know, 0 0.09 nano, Coulombs per meter. So, uh, you know, this is negatively or whatever. This is charged, positively charged. And, uh, and what, is, what does the electric field do here? Yes, what does the electric field do here? Is the electric field at this point in space? There's nothing here, by the way. There's nothing here. I'm just talking about a point in space. Could be here, could be here, could be here, could be here. There's, there's no particle or anything here. But at that point in space, what is the electric field due to this small, incrementally small amount of charge over here that we can sort of approximate as a... Uh, and, and, and here's the question. Is it... it, it, it would, uh, would the electric field at this point because it's a vector field, let's, let's not forget. The electric field's a vector field. Would, would the electric field be pointing toward that charge? Or would the electric field be pointing away from that charge? Well, I'll tell you, all of the people that said it would be pointing away from that charge were correct. And why? Why? <laughs> I've taught this so many times. I, I just, it, we have to, whenever we're talking about an electric field, right? You know, we are always talking about Newtons per plus one Coulomb. Newtons per plus one Coulomb. So we always envision this point in space, even though there's absolutely nothing here. We envision it as what direction would the force be in? What direction would the force be in if there was a plus one Coulomb charge right here? What direction would the force be in, right? And of course, this equals volts per meter. And, you know, if we just draw a line here, well, it just so happens I happen to have a ruler. I just... <laughs> You know, I got this out for some totally different reason. Yeah, I, I cooked. I cooked some uh, uh, <laughs> for the first time in a long time. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is the electric field that that little point at DZ uh, has right, on, uh, on this point in space. It's going in that direction. And our radial vector here, right, let's just continue that radial vector on. I have to remember to put the cap on the pen and not get as excited. 
uh, that radio vector going out there uh, is in that direction. So uh, when you think of it, what we've really got here, since this is d sub z, I'm going to call this uh, d sub e or, or d e, right? And of course, that's going to be a vector too, because that's a, a that's the electric field, but a very small electric field. Now, here's what I'm saying. What if I I, I ran the projection down from this, you know, d e onto the radial vector, right? Then I could say that this is really d sub e or, or d e sub r. That would be the uh, electric field component in the radial direction. Does everyone see that? That would be the, and, and, and what would that actually equal? That would equal, because this angle right here, I mean, you know, if I look at this angle right here, I'm gonna call that angle theta. If I look at this angle right here, I'm going to call that angle theta because it's a opposite, you know, uh, uh, angles uh, are all the same. So this would just be equal to dE times the cosine of theta. Does everyone see that? Well, I, I hope everybody sees that because that's what it is. I can't... Uh, can't call it anything else. And so I'm going to also say that this, this point here, right out uh, radially away from uh, the transmission line that we've got, this point here radially away, I'm going to say that that is a distance r away from that, right? Okay. So as long as we've got all of our things uh, set up there. Now, this transmission line is not like a point. It's not like a point uh, uh, thing. Transmission lines, uh, uh, I'll write this down. Transmission lines for all of the deaf uh, participants. Uh, <laughs> how would that work? I guess, you know, hey, I watch movies with no sound. Uh, trans, <laughs> what was I talking about here? No idea. I'll get back to it. <laughs> oh, oh, transmission line, um, charge density. Uh, I just write Q, Q over M, you know, I should really write C over M, shouldn't I? Because it's Coulombs per, per meter. Okay, so for a transmission line, uh, the, the charge density is in Coulombs per meter. And uh, what we have here is a very short thing. So when we're actually looking at the charge, when we're approximating the charge, right? The charge would be charge per meter times the length that we are looking at. So the charge that we're gonna be using is going to be, uh, you know, uh, rho times dz. That's gonna be it. It's just a very short piece very short piece of the transmission line. And the transmission line is telling us how many Coulombs it has flowing through it, right? Uh, okay, anyway, I think you get it. <laughs> Coulombs per meter. And, and that's how we uh, break down the transmission line. That is our charge density. It's a linear charge density. Let's put that there, linear rather than a surface charge density, linear charge density. Okay, so uh, when, when we're looking at this, when we wanna find out what uh, DE is, right? We wanna look at the charge that's gonna be there. So it'll be the charge density times 
that short little piece, that's going to be our, um, our Q, right? I'm sure that everybody remembers uh, when we were looking at electric fields for point charges. I'll just put that down here. Point charges. Uh, it was just Q over four pi epsilon r squared, right? So that's all I'm doing here. Is the Q now is rho times dz. And then at the bottom, I still have four pi epsilon uh, r squared, right? Uh, I shouldn't really say r squared. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's, that's probably a misnomer there, isn't it? Because r usually refers to the distance, doesn't it? Well, there's a, it's a good thing I left myself some extra room there. Well, actually, I didn't leave myself enough room, so I'll just wipe that out. Uh, but what is that distance? I mean, the, the original equation here says r squared, but I've also used r here. So it's really the distance between here and here, isn't it? Right? This is poor point. I'm going to block that out and write, uh, you know, for point charge. just so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. And of course, the R in that is not the R in this. Two different R's. In fact, what should I, uh, let's, uh, let's make that a capital R, and that'll be a small R. And then over here, we're going to use the, I could have used a capital R, and then, okay, why don't I? Right, and this would be my capital R right here, wouldn't it? And so what I get is rho, dz divided by 4 pi epsilon times the square root of r squared plus z squared. Does everyone see how that works out there? OK. And of course, that's what we've got here, and that's the distance. That's the distance over there, so that's all fine. That's not too much of a problem. Now, let's say that I wanted to find out DE in the radial direction, right? This one up here. And, and, and isn't that just DE uh, cosine theta? So, so let's just uh, write that out. So if we've got DE cosine theta, then that would be DE, which, which we've got right there. And what is the cosine of theta? Well, if I look at theta right here, right? If I look at theta right here, I see that the cosine of theta is actually R over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is r over the square root of r squared plus z squared. Right? Does everyone see that? And so now if I was going to incorporate that into this, Let's see uh, what I have here. Well, we've got rho, we've got dz, that's coming out of this one just for the numerator, and then in here, we've got r. In the denominator, we've got, uh, I guess, uh, well, how can I? I'll do this. <laughs> there you go. They'll never figure that one out. Four pi epsilon, <laughs> right? And then I've got r squared plus z squared to the one half there. And I've got, uh, hey, wait a second, wait. Oh no, wait, that's not, that's not to the one half. Who didn't raise their hand? <laughs> Well, of course, nobody did because you couldn't. It's squared. Here's what I should do. I should just do this. There we go. There. 
That's my disclaimer. It's squared. That's the square. That's the distance, but now I've squared it. So uh, that's good. And so, of course, if I've squared it, that's now 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2, which gives me r squared plus z squared. That's a square uh, to the 3 halves, right? I'm sure everybody is still following me. Now, here's what I want to do. This is just d e of r, right? Which is really giving us the radial away from here. It's giving us the radial electric field. That's what I want. What is the electric field that this transmission line is giving off into the atmosphere around it? And how far does it go? Right? And how strong is it? And what are the voltage, uh, you know, two feet away from it? So those are all the things that I want to know. And I can find all of that out if I can get a profile of how the electric field changes radially away. And by radially, what I mean is, let's say that this transmission line here, I'm actually looking, on it, it, looking at it end on. So I would see the transmission line like that, right? Now, how does the electric field radiate around that, I mean, what are the voltage uh, things? How does it radiate around that wire? That's what I want to find out. And I can find that out, you know, because that's what's really going to happen. I'm going to have some type of electric field uh, around that wire, a radial electric field around that wire. I think everybody can see that. That's what we, that's, that's how we transmit energy. So let's go back to this. So if that's D E sub R, what is E sub R? And of course, all of these, by the way, are going in the, you know, radial uh, direction. I could, I, 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 I don't think I have to throw the radial univector on there all over the place, but sure, whatever. Uh, now, back to this. Now, if I've got that, let's, let's integrate that from minus A to plus A. But before I integrate the whole thing, why don't I take the constants out of there, right? Well, rho, that's a constant. R, that's a constant, right? How about 4 pi epsilon? And in this case, since we're talking about atmosphere, epsilon sub zero, I'll put epsilon sub zero here. Sure, because we're talking about, you know, a transmission line in the atmosphere, you know, rather than something else. All right. Now, what we want to do is you want to integrate that then. We want to integrate it from minus A to plus A. Uh, DZ, yep, what's left? DZ over R squared plus Z squared taken to the three halves. Right? And so what is that? That happens to be rho, the charge density along the line, uh, divided by 2 pi epsilon sub zero r, and then r squared now i can write this one in two ways i'm going to write it uh, r squared over a squared plus one that's probably the easiest way for you to see it okay anyway so that's the uh the integral uh from this integrating from minus A to positive A. Now I want you to look at something here. Look at that. Look at, uh, so, so when I talk about the radial electric field, and of course this is still R, yes. <laughs> when I talk about the uh, radial electric field around this transmission line, um, 
and by transmission line, I, I, I could just as easily mean a coaxial cable transmitting uh, communication signals, right? Uh, I look at that and, and I look at this back here, right? R squared over A squared. Now transmission line, when we're talking about the length of a transmission line as compared to this distance, let's say of uh, 10 meters or one meter or, or 16 meters or 22 meters, uh, compared to uh, 30 kilometers, it, it, it's not really. There's no, there's there's no real comparison, right? So, uh, I'll write it over here. So, if a is much greater than r, which it is, uh, this actually is almost exactly equal in all cases to uh, the linear charge density of the transmission line divided by 2 pi epsilon sub zero r, right? Because this a is just going to be so large compared to r that a squared is going to be super large compared to r squared, and, and this is going to become zero. So zero plus one equals one, and that's what I've got here, one. So why even write, why even write it down? Uh, it's one. And so that's what I wanted to bring out here was that that's the electric field for a transmission line. So when we start talking about transmission lines like this, and I'm gonna, the, the next thing I'll talk about actually is, uh, well, actually the voltage for a single transmission line. That's the next thing I wanna talk about. Um, and uh, and how would I do that? How would I do the voltage for a uh, transmission line? All right. Let's just uh, let's sort of cut this out here. Let me see how much time I have. Oh, plenty of time. Now. The voltage uh, profile around a transmission line uh, is the same that we did before, right? Remember that we just used minus the integral of uh, E uh, dot dr, right? So that's the voltage, and uh, if we want to, what we have to do is really solve uh, that equation. And, and what I'm gonna do, instead of doing it from infinity or whatever, I'm gonna do it between two points. So if you remember before, I said that I had uh, infinity to R1 up here, right? Before infinity to R1. Well, now I'm gonna have R1 still, but now I'll put R2, right? So that we can find the voltage potential between two different locations, uh, two different uh, radial locations. Let's say that this is R1, and we want to find the voltage at that point, and uh, we're going to find the voltage at that point, and then we find the voltage out here, right, at R2, and then we can find the voltage differential between those two points. And so that's what I'm going to do here. So it's between R2, which before was infinity, and R1. All right, great. So uh, let's just uh, put that in there. In fact, uh, I think I'm gonna start over here and uh, just interchange a, a couple of things minus. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna pull all of those uh, constants outside of the integral so that I don't have to keep writing forever. So it's going to be uh, minus uh, rho uh, divided by, ooh, I'll put the 2 pi epsilon sub zero, right, which is what we've got over there. And then I'm going to have the integral of 1 over r dr. And that's going to be from R2 to R1. 
right? And of course, that's because I've got the negative sign there. I could, if I didn't have the negative sign there, I could switch it around and be from R, you know, uh, one to R two. But I just left it the same way that I did the integral before, when um, you know we, uh, you know we, when we did that before for the point charge. I, why change it? I'm just going to leave it there because we use the negative, so it's all fine. So what I end up getting, if I just uh, interchange those in there, and I think everybody knows that the integral of one over r dr is the natural log of r. If you don't know that, I'm just gonna show you. The, uh, the, the integral of one over r dr equals the natural log of r. Okay? And uh, I think everybody uh, probably already know, always probably always did know that. So let's go and see what we have here then. So I've got minus rho times the natural log of R1 divided by two pi epsilon sub zero minus a minus rho times the natural log of R2 right, divided by two pi epsilon sub zero. Now, I think that everybody can see here that what I've really got is a minus minus here so that that makes uh, R2 uh, a plus and this is a minus. And I think everybody also remembers that if I have the natural log of A minus the natural log of B, that equals the natural log of A divided by B, right? So this would be the natural log of this divided by the natural log of this, right? And then I wouldn't also need any of those negatives either. So that's just uh, rho over two pi epsilon sub zero times the natural log of R2 over R1, right? Does everybody see that? Uh, I, I hope that nobody has any questions <laughs> because, uh, you know, you're not here. Uh, a much better way to give a lecture. And, I, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm right all the way through. So, <laughs> and I got rid of those negatives right there. So that all worked out well. And I think that uh, since I set the timer, God, I, I wish I set the timer more often because uh, it all, but it always seems to work out just at the end of the uh, page anyway. So we not only got line charges, I should really, we, we, we got the electric field for a line charge. And we also got the voltages or the voltage equation for uh, a, a line charge, the voltage differential between two different lo uh, radio locations from a line of charge. Okay, that worked out uh, pretty well. I think we're just about out of time, maybe even save a couple megabytes. So, um, all right. and. Uh, who knows what's next? I haven't even thought about it yet.